Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us today. My name is Heather. This training video is designed to help introduce you to some of the new features that Practice Perfect has incorporated into the system to help accommodate the new PQRS and the new functional reporting requirements from Medicare. The focus of this video is more on the functional limitations reporting uh, requirements because those are in effect as of July 1st, 2013. I will also touch on the PQRS and how to report that in the system, but the focus of this video is really on functional limitation reporting. The Physician Quality Reporting System, or acronym PQRS, is a reporting system voluntary program from Medicare. To participate in PQRS, you're basically recording measures that you're monitoring or treating your patients for, and each of those measures have codes that are submitted to Medicare during billing called G-codes. Functional limitation reporting, also required by Medicare, is a mandatory requirement for all practices that provide outpatient therapy services under Medicare Part B. Somewhat similar to PQRS, you are also submitting measure codes for your patients as you monitor their treatment. For each treatment code, at a certain interval of time, you are required to report G codes as well as severity modifiers. Although somewhat similar in terms of G-code submission, PQRS and functional limitations reporting are completely separate and different from one another. The functional limitation reporting requirement comes into effect July 1, 2013. If you submit claims through to Medicare, Without the proper functional limitations reporting requirements, your claims will be denied. Functional limitation reporting has different frequency reporting requirements as well. Again, functional limitations reporting starts now July 1st, 2013 and is mandatory. Without submitting functional limitations reporting requirements as of July 1st, your files will be denied or possible penalty. You are required to submit functional limitation reporting G codes at initial therapy service or assessment at least once every 10th treatment date at time of reevaluation, discharge, and again if continuing treatment with a patient who has a second or third functional limitation. One functional limitation is to be selected and recorded on per patient at a time. Each functional limitation has a set of three G codes. The G codes represent the current status, the projected goal status, and the discharge status. For each of the G codes submitted, you also select and submit a severity modifier. The Practice Perfect software itself has incorporated some new features to help automate this process for you. In addition to that, on our website, we also have some cheat sheets available for you so that you can reference to help understand how the G-codes and severity modifiers work. For full and complete details on both the PQRS and functional limitations reporting requirements, we suggest you go to the CMS or Medicare websites. APTA, ASHA, or AOTA official websites as well. Let's take you now into the Practice Perfect software and show you how the new features work to help automate the process for submitting functional limitations reporting and PQRS reporting to Medicare. Let's review first some of the behind the scenes setup. Under the housekeeping drop down menu, the clinical section, you'll notice that we have a new measures option. The measures option lists all of the PQRS measures 
along with the functional limitations measures. Each of these measures is grouped with G codes to the right hand side. This setup housekeeping screen is not editable by the clinics. It's managed by the Practice Perfect team. Back under the housekeeping drop down list, under the financial section and your modifiers section, when you upgrade to the latest version, you'll notice that you have some new modifiers appearing on your screen. The severity modifiers that start with the letter C are all now incorporated into your list, as well as the modifiers required for PQRS reporting. To the right, you'll notice that each new modifier has two new columns allow for functional reporting and PQRS slash functional. The tick boxes should already be selected for you. The allow for function column ensures that the modifiers selected will show up when reporting on functional limitations. Back under the housekeeping menu, financial and fee codes, you'll also notice the new G code listing. All sets of G-codes connected to functional limitations and PQRS are now listed in the system as well. When you double click on one of the new G-codes, we also have a new tick box to indicate whether the G-code belongs to the functional limitations reporting or the PQRS. In addition, there's a new fee type category so that all G-codes connected to PQRS and functional limitations are recorded as that type of fee type. All that I've shown you so far should be automated for you. There shouldn't be any boxes that you need to tick. I just wanted to show you where the information is coming from behind the scenes in case you have to make any modifications. The last area or setting that we need to turn on is the automation. Under the Settings drop-down list and under the Customize Progress Notes and Documentation section, you'll see that we have a new tick box called Enable PQRS and Functional Testing Automation. You do need to tick that box to turn on the automation for reminders as to when to submit the G-codes. Now let's go into our patient's file and look at the new area where we can record what measures we're treating or monitoring the patient for. In each patient's file, in the Incidents and then Statistics tab, we have a new area at the bottom to record the PQRS and functional measures. To add a PQRS or functional measure to a client's file, you're simply clicking the green plus sign and using your list to select which measures for PQRS and which measures for functional limitations. Access to this area has also been added from other areas within the system. For example, if you're in the Activities by Service section for your client, we have a new icon called Incident Measures. That also takes you to the same screen where you can add or modify both PQRS and functional measures attached to the patient's file. From within the Clinical Daily Soap Note, we also show the same icon there as well to access that information. And again, from your Activities by Document section, we also have the same icon available here. The measures that you attach per patient determine which G-codes need to be submitted and when. Let's go into a patient's daily clinical note or SOAP note and see how the new measures track. Simply click on your patient's name from wherever you may be. You can do this from the scheduler as well. And the daily clinical note you fill out as normal. Nothing has really changed from this screen. The exception is that we have the new measures icon should you want to add or modify the measures or look at the measures you're tracking on the patient's file. 
If you enter your treatment from within your clinical note, you will go to the hand symbol, record which CPT codes, units and time that you spent with your patient's file, confirm the diagnostic codes as normal. This part hasn't changed. When you hit the OK button, if it's time to record on a PQRS or functional limitations measure, this screen will pop up for you, forcing you to choose your selection. This screen is telling me that the PQRS measure I've indicated as number 148 back pain, I need to record my, my G-code. For my functional limitation, I chose mobility. It's telling me that I need to record my current G-code status and my goal or projected goal G-code status. I need to include the required severity modifiers. Say OK when done to store that information. The CPT codes and G codes will now show up on your printed or previewed version of your clinical note. You still sign, complete your goals, and your body chart exactly the same way. Back in the scheduler view, we've also added a countdown at the top of the screen. This countdown lets you know how many visits, how many dates of service the patient has been in for and completed from the last time that you submitted the last functional G-code requirement. The requirement requests that you submit a minimum of the 10th visit date after the initial assessment. As you're approaching the 10th treatment date, what would happen then is when you're entering your treatment from either within your clinical note or from the scheduler, and you're entering your CPT codes on the 10th visit date, once you say OK, the system will again remind you or require you to enter your functional G-code and severity modifier combination. Once that combination has been entered, the count starts all over again at the top of the screen from zero. Should you submit an eval or re-eval code, the system will again remind you to enter your G-code and severity modifier combination. On all of our treatment or service entry screens, meaning the hand symbol is used from your function bar, we have a new area at the bottom to force either the PQRS functional interim or initial entry, as well as a discharge entry. The discharge option will now allow you to select the current and discharge G-code and severity modifier combination. This option will be used for discharging a functional limitation measure on your current client. Those options are also available from within your clinical daily soap notes. The activities by service screen shows you all of the CPT codes as it always has, plus it includes the G code entries as well. If we look at our functional limitation reporting requirements in terms of a HICFA 1500 red form, you'll notice that the CPT codes are always entered first and then the matching G codes required underneath. The order is very important and Practice Perfect takes care of this for you. You'll notice that for each of the G codes connected to the functional limitations reporting also has the discipline modifier as well as the matching severity modifiers. The G codes are non-billable submission codes, therefore we usually have the zero amount 
next to the G code itself. You can change that should your clearinghouse or should your billing provider require a one cent charge. And how you would do that is under the housekeeping drop down list, back in the financial section and the fee code area where your G codes are listed. Select the G code, double click, and instead of showing a zero amount per one unit, enter a one cent. The last thing I'd like to show you is what happens when you're ready to discharge a client completely, meaning they have no further functional limitations that you'll be reporting on. You're discharging the client as a whole, you're discharging the file. You can discharge a patient several different ways, one of which is finding your client under your list of clients, flagging their name, and then using the discharge client incident icon. If the patient is a Medicare client where functional or PQRS measures have been recorded, the system will populate the G codes for you required on discharge. This method will ensure that not only the patient is discharged as a whole, but that your proper G codes and severity modifiers are submitted to Medicare on the final discharge report. We'd like to thank you again for joining us today on this brief tutorial. We do expect many modifications coming in the near future as our clients give us feedback regarding these new integrated features. So we always encourage you to join our social media sites to keep up to date with any changes or modifications to the software. Please remember that you can always contact our support department through telephone or email. We're always happy to assist. We also recommend staying current with the Medicare Medicaid Services websites as well as your professional association websites. Please also check our website regularly for updates.